we are now looking at another standard in consolidation known as IS28. This standard is very key to consolidation as well. It's a topic there in your advanced financial reporting. So IS28 specifically talks about investment in associates. Who is an associate? Is the question now. An associate is an entity of whom you control 20% to about 50% there. And in this range, a company or a holder is deemed to have what we call sig significant. I just respell that. Significant influence. You do not have control, take note of it. You just have significant influence. So any holding between within that range makes you or makes it makes that company an associate to you and we do not consolidate an associate why there is no control remember what is involved in consolidation you add assets and assets of the other company because they're trying to group everything together that's why they're called group accounts but can you add assets of a company that you do not control no so that's the logic so you only consolidate where there is control even ifrs3 mentions that goodwill and other consolidation will, will take place where control is seen so in this case they're just going to deal with what they call according to the standard it mentions what they call equity accounting what do they mean by equity accounting so equity accounting is just like a working a specific working that you will add as you deal with your group accounts we call it, uh, you can even call it maybe working number six because most of the standard workings will end on five. So this will be like the next inclusive working. So this working as stipulated by equity accounting we would call this one investment in associates. This is what this working will be called, investment in associate. So this investment in associate will have the following components that you need to be dealing with. You look at the costs. How much did you invest? That's the costs you put. You add any share of post acquisition profits. That's what will cop up. How do you get post acquisition profits? Post acquisition profits always come from that working number two called net assets. Net assets working. So you would make a net assets working specifically for this associate. You have your your shares. Remember, it's part of your net assets. Your shares, your share capital, your premiums, retained earnings, and whatnot. So you look at your acquisition and your reporting date. So the difference between acquisition and reporting date gives you this share of pub. The pub, sorry, and then you get a share. How do you get this share? Let's, as we said, an associate is between twenty to fifty. Let's say you own thirty percent here. So you are going to go and charge thirty percent of that pub that has been realized from the net assets. That's what we mean here. That's the explanation. Then what else are we looking at? You should less any unrealized profits. Less any unrealized profit. Okay. So post acquisition unrealized profit. So PRP or URP meaning just the unrealized profit. You might have a sale within the same associate. You the parent are selling to your associate, and then you realize a profit. What do you do with that? You need to remove it. Remember, when you're dealing with this unrealized profit, let's give another scenario so that you understand what profit figure you should put here. Let's say you've got a profit of 40. You realize the profit of 40 from this sale. They even tell you in the question you have realized the profit of 40. Because sometimes maybe they make you calculate the profit. Let's just say, okay, we've got this 40. Are you going to put the 40 in this working? No. Remember, you do not have the entire 100% holding that associate. You only control how much. So you're only going to get 30% of that 40 that you've realized as a total profit from that sale. So this, you just get 30% because that's how much you control in the associate or your influence there. As we would, let's not use control, let's use the influence that you have there. So you're going to get 30% of that 40, which is what you will record here in the cost, uh, in the investment in associate working. You can even put it but in brackets because we are subtracting that. If the question tells you, you received some dividends from this associate. Dividends are equally subtracted as well. So you put them there and you subtract. So this is what makes up your investment associates working. It's that simple. So 
like we've talked about this unrealized profits is it only going to appear on the investment associate working no you should also take it to retained earnings the reason is that you're trying to first deal with the remember how the balance sheets appears the investment associate actually goes on the top section of your balance sheet which is the asset section there so when you adjust the asset section maybe with a reduction like we said that meaning you need to also have a corresponding reduction on the equity section of your balance sheet and the and the equity section that realizes profit is the retained earnings so even the retained earnings go and subtract this unrealized profit that you've gotten that is the treatment of this profit double remember your double entry has to apply everywhere that's the only way yeah so it's like you credit the investment associates and you debit retained earnings in effect you're actually doing what you're reducing but you've completed the double entry so that's the catch there let's take note of these few few important tips so that's your is 28 summarized that's how you deal with an associate the rest you just compute but this is just an extra working when you just see oh an associate has featured in my question but when you start consolidating you are not going to add the associates asset you won't add the associates loans nothing just this working will appear in your financials investment associate you input it that's it